The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start the show with the German DAX like we usually do. Uh, as you can see, folks, we were making multiple ABCD patterns up there last week, right there on the close. Very similar to what we were seeing, of course, in the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, doing the same type of pattern which usually is bearish, and then with the news uh, Sunday night about the El Presidente uh, bringing in the tariffs again, uh, that was enough to push the market down. If you'll remember, folks, we had a mysterious guest on Friday that was calling for a high on Friday. I cannot remember his name. He lives down there in Naples, Florida. He's from Indiana. What was his name? Oh, Norman calls it to the minute, Winsky. We have to give him a plus on that one. Also, one of our good friends from Las Vegas also had called that as a uh, GAN date because we had a flash crash, as you remember, back on May 5th a few years ago. So that's another interesting one that happened, uh, what we're looking at. Now, uh, folks, one of the themes that I used this week was the fact that we were making this gigantic top in the stock market by using, you know, the composite, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones, because there was some divergence in some of these. But the one that uh, was very, very interesting, of course, was this uh, weekly chart on the E-mini S&P, because we had made uh, what we call a, you know, a triple top pattern. As you can see, it's a, a three drive to a top pattern. And uh, it's a weekly, too, but we saw this pattern, you know, also on the daily chart and on the four-hour chart. We were watching that quite a bit up there at that 29.50 uh, level. We're going to see uh, how it acts today. Now, folks, when you have big drops like this, this is uh, these are outlier events. You don't see these very often. You have to remember that this is a still a bull market. And if uh, Trump comes out and said, hey, someone um, miscombobbled me or something and I didn't, it's not what I said, you know, this thing could be back up there. I don't think that's going to happen because that was serious money last night that uh, that made that happen. When I get calls from several people that I really respect uh, in the middle of the night, uh, well, almost middle of the night, asking me what was going on, I have to realize that if they're scared, everybody else is too. I spent some time uh, last night and again this morning speaking with Simon Lee of Sylvius Financial in uh, Chicago because this affects the grain markets. If you'll those of you that follow the grain markets, you know, we have uh, big drops. We have 20 cents lower in beans, 15 cents lower uh, in wheat, and 10 cents lower in corn. And so these are, you know, really, really big drops. And we're looking to buy these grains down in here. But the key is we want to, you know, try to get in without risking a, an arm and a leg. So we're going to wait a day or so uh, to see what's happening. We had that new moon on uh, f uh, Friday, excuse me, on Saturday. And uh, we'll see if that, uh, oh, I don't know if it affected the Kentucky Derby or not, folks, but for the first time in 145 years, they disqualified the winner. Uh, folks, there's two types of disqualifications. One is a stewards, where the guys that run the track, they call the qualif they call the qualification. And the other is a jockey. And this was a jockey disqualification because uh, two of the jockeys uh, that were running horses third and fourth uh, felt that they were, uh, impeded a little bit and on the tapes I guess it did look like that and there was no you know there was not a whole lot of uproar because you could see that because of the sloppy track the number seven horse national security did drift out a little bit but I would think on a sloppy track they'd give them a little bit of a you know a little bit of a uh, what you call it a little bit of a break but that's neither here nor there I was fortunate enough to have the horse that finished second at 14 to 1 code of honor so I made a couple of bucks you know like $90 had a little bit of fun but it was good folks I have to tell you though the the, the race before the Kentucky Derby was the one that I was really interested in and, and I you know I got a minute here since I 
have a lot of time filling in time, but many, many years ago, this is 30-some years ago in Pismo Beach, I used to take uh, Steve Shapiro's mother, Mumsy, uh, to the track every Saturday where I wrote my newsletter, Astro Cycles. I did it. We started at like 11 o'clock in, in the morning. We finished about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I had to take it to the printer, but every Saturday I would take Mumsy to the track. And on this particular day, it was in uh, June of um, 1991, and uh, there was a horse that they had brought from France, and uh, it was the Hollywood Gold Cup, which is the equivalent to the Kentucky Derby in Southern California, and it's a big race. There's like 12 horses, and it is raining so hard you can't even see your, your hand in front of your face, and they brought this horse in, and this horse was uh, a mudder. He liked to run in the, in, the, in the mud, and so one of my buddies that was there said, you got to bet this horse. He was 40 to 1, and I did, and the horse won. I won like $800, and I bought a little uh, rocking horse, handmade rocking horse for my my future grandson that wasn't <laughs> wasn't born till nine years later, and the guy that built the rocking horse put a, a brass plate on it, telling me, you know, the name of the horse. It was Marquetry, and it was number eight. And uh, believe it or not, in the race before the Kentucky Derby, Marquetry's grandson was running in the race, a horse called Clyde's uh, something, Clyde something, uh, Clyde's Ride or something like that. And he was ridden by my favorite jockey, Luis Saiz, out of Gulfstream Park. He came to ride national security in the Derby, which he would have won, but he didn't. But he was riding that horse. But he, I only bet him when he's, he's a good price. And this horse was 27 to 1. And so I bet my usual $20 across the board, and they're coming down the stretch, and my horse is first, and there's two horses neck and neck. The rest of them are so far back, it doesn't even matter. And they keep running and running and running, and it's a three-horse photo finish, and I finish third instead of <laughs> instead of first. But my third bet uh, paid me $90 you know, on my uh, $60 bet, so I, I was uh, I was rather happy. But if he'd have won, I'd have won like $1,200. And uh, anyway, I had a good day, went down to the Gospel Mission, and I was able to help out a few folks there. And uh, but folks, whenever you're feeling bad, go to a place like that. Oh, I wasn't feeling bad. I was actually feeling pretty good. And uh, But anyway, I bought some socks for the folks and some bologna. They needed bologna. So anyway, let's move on to some of these other markets. Uh, someone asked me, you know, what do you do, you know, on days like, uh, you know, you have these big gap downs. Folks, there's only one. If you're going to trade, uh, you know, for trying to make a living at this, you got to trade and thinking about risk. That's really what you got to do. Here's here's what I'm doing. I, I'm this is I'm just giving my little game plan here. If you'll notice here that uh, I'm looking for a little ABC to come up to that 382. Here we opened at 2909. Okay. And I think if we get up there again one more time, people are going to thinking that's a big reversal today. And hey, it could be. But if we make that ABCD there, I don't have to risk very much. I've only got to risk a nickel, you know, five handles to see if I'm going to be right or not. So that's uh, that's neither here nor there. So that's what I'm watching. Uh, we got a couple of really big things happening, folks, not just necessarily in these uh, markets that we're uh, talking about, these stock markets, but there's a couple others that are huge that I think is very, very important. And uh, we'll we'll cover one of those when we get back. And it's very, very slippery, and it's black. So we'll be right back. And a lot of it comes from Texas. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're back, and um, the crude oil is in the news also because they're shooting rockets over Israel again, which is usually uh, an occurrence. And uh, this time it's big time, 700 rockets. But uh, uh, for some reason, that's not causing the oil market to react very well. Usually when that happens, oil rallies. But given the fact that the situation going on with the tariff is taking over everything, that that's probably what's going on. But I want to bring to your attention, this is one of the things that I focused on in the newsletter, and I think it's uh, worthy of uh, bringing it to your attention here uh, at TFNN, and that is that we have a situation in the crude oil that is uh, very, very unusual. And I say that because this is only the uh, the uh, this is only the second time. Let's take a quick look at it so you can see here. And this is over the last three months now. You notice that we had our first ABCD pattern down there on May the 8th. Uh, it was sitting right at a 61% retracement of the previous low. Beautiful ABCD pattern lining up perfectly. We went up to the uh, 1.618. We went from 54 up to 60. Then we went sideways. We didn't make an ABCD pattern when we got to March 28th. It couldn't make a lower low than it did on March 22nd, which was relatively bullish. And then, of course, once we took out the 60 level, we went all the way up to 66. And here, since the uh, 23rd of April, we've made a really nice ABCD pattern that measured down to uh, 60, uh, 39, and the low uh, today was 60.31. We're trading at around 61.40 right now. That was spot on. So that completed a ABCD pattern in the bull market. Now remember, folks, I 
don't know fundamental. Well, that's the understatement of the year. I don't follow fundamentals very much because I don't understand them. But I try to look at the charts to see if the entry there will give me a spot where I don't have to risk very much. And that's what was happening uh, this morning in crude oil. I mean, we probably wouldn't have gotten a break like this if it hadn't have been for the tariffs or the Hamas or whatever it is going to be. But it, neither here nor there, but it got there. The, the $64 question is that if the uh, crude oil goes below $60, then it is really uh, going to be in really serious trouble. So watch the crude oil, folks. It's completing a very, very interesting pattern that, uh, and it's already moved a, you know, a little more than $1,000 uh, uh, in your favor. So keep a close eye on that. It's a very interesting one to look at. Also, folks, we've had a, a question about the coin, the Bitcoin. We'll bring this up here. This thing is acting pretty nicely ever since we uh, made that bottom down there at the 786 at 3100 uh, we're hitting some really serious numbers here in, in bitcoin folks going back to last august it's a 50 percent retracement from the last august it's also from early september it's a 61.8 percent retracement and since uh, early november it's at a 78 percent retracement so and as you can see this is a really nice chart uh johan uh, uh, from Denmark uh, does uh, work on Bitcoin. He trades uh, trades this quite a bit. But if you'll look at this, you'll notice that it's making a really nice three drive to a top pattern. Uh, and this is a daily chart uh, that you can see it up there at point D at there at 5800. And it certainly made a beautiful, just absolutely perfect. Stopped exactly where it should have. Now, whether it's going to go down from here or not, we don't know. But at that point, you have a really good risk reward relationship because you don't have to risk more than probably two hundred dollars a share uh in bitcoin and if it's right it's got you know well over uh, 750 you know dollar per share profit so that's a 71 uh you know, excuse me a four to one uh, risk reward ratio so that's that's usually a pretty good one to look at another one uh we, we should talk just a little bit about one other thing and then we want to get into the uh I will I will post that uh, since we're talking in the den here they're talking about the uh, US dollar uh let's uh let's just talk that about that a little bit because it's really important here folks um this well I don't want to do that yeah let's uh, I'll do the Japanese yen first I don't want to do the no, save that hold on let's put this up here uh, for the uh, the Japanese yen, as you can see here, we made that uh, this is a weekly chart. Last week, we made the 78% level up there at uh, 113.30. Uh, uh, we're now uh, excuse <laughs> 112.30. We're now trading at 110 and change. Uh, it certainly uh, we came down and we stopped right at the 61% retracement on the weekly chart. Uh, last night and is held relatively well, but all of these currencies, folks, are Oh my goodness, this this is the one that is the most uh, the most amazing to me. Forget the tariff stuff, that's that to me is that's cannon fodder. But the the one that's really important is if you'll if you follow foreign currencies, folks. I don't want to give the house away. So and hey, sometimes the house is made of cards. But take a look at the U.S. dollar index on the weekly chart, boys and girls. Use that as your homework, okay? I want you to do that. You'll learn a lot just by, you don't have to go over the last 10 years, just go back to the last year. And look what's happened to the U.S. dollar index. It's just, uh, it, it's really something. So that's your homework assignment for for today. Is When we're finished with the show here, go pull up a U.S. dollar index and take a look at it. And if it doesn't open your eyes, and if it doesn't open your eyes, I'll be very, very surprised. So keep an eye on that. That's very, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, regarding the uh, the bond market, folks, the bond and the reason why I say that about the foreign exchange, for, they can't play games with that. You can say tariffs, mayor from bear, if it won't make any difference, because that's the big money all over the world. Those are the 29 countries that are out there, you know, putting their, uh, you know, proverbial lives on the line. So that's real central bank stuff. They can play games with it for a short period of time, but not for a very long period of time. So uh, keep that one you know, in mind. And they follow the patterns just absolutely uh, almost to the letter. Not always, but 90% of the time, you know, they're there 
you know, doing that. Remember this uh, British pound, we had a really nice move in that British pound, and uh, that paid us a nice little uh, piece of change when that got down to that 129 level. Look at the support that was there, folks. I mean, you had a low from February 11th, stopped exactly at the 78% level. It was exactly 50% from the low on December, uh, January the 4th. And uh, look at it. Now we got up to 31.73. That was your first profit objective. That was 61% retracement. And now we're backing off a little bit. We backed off about 90 pips already, but it looks like it still has more to the go to the upside. But I would really highly recommend you look at the um, at that dollar index because that's a very very interesting uh, U.S. dollar index. Because remember that's 55% of the euro. And that's why it is, uh, it's so very, very important. That's the way it looks like for me. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a, a teaser, more or less, try to stimulate some thought here on a Monday morning. If you'll take a look here, let's just get this one up here so we can look at, look at this one here. This is the transportation index. Last week, we made a perfect head and shoulders pattern. And remember, we like these patterns because they have really beautiful names like three drives to a top and head and shoulders patterns and Gartley's butterflies, whatever, whatever. 877-927-6648 from the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Cross. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting... 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, bear with me here. My uh, my alert system is going nuts on me because of this big gap down we're having, and it's related to something that we've been watching uh, for quite some time. Let me get it ready for you, and I'll bring it up, and you'll be able to see it. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just a minute. Just a second here, boys and girls. All right, this will just be one second. Stop the noise. There we go. Let me get this ready for you, and then we will be ready to go. I... I was expecting it, but it snuck up on me. So give me one second so we can look at it together, and we'll see whether it's going to be correct or not. And that is our good friend um, Apple. Let's get up here to take a look at it. You'll see here, folks, that we were watching for a potential island reversal. Uh, you'll notice that we've had that that island reversal pattern this morning. Now, we should not fill that gap at uh, 208. That should not get there. That's uh, what I'm looking at right here. Now, folks, the problem with this particular trade is the parameters that we wanted to see was for the market to close in the lower part of the range. And as you can see by that green candle from Friday, the market was up at around 211. So it's down like seven bucks today. But if it, had, if it would have closed in the lower part of the range, and that's the key, it must close in the lower part of the range, down around 209, uh, 208.80, somewhere in that ballpark. If it would have closed there and gapped down today, you have an island reversal pattern. Folks, this is a flat-out bearish pattern. It might fail, but, uh, boy, you just uh, it's just one of those kind that you really, uh, really like to see if you like um, – you know, island reversal patterns because you you're up there for three days. Um, Steve Neeson, the, the candlestick guy, I believe he called it the three black crows uh, sitting there, and but uh, that is definitely. But you know, where do you sell it when it opens down seven dollars lower in a stock that's an uptrend? It didn't take out the the lows of last week as of yet, so it still looks bullish. But uh, that island reversal pattern is definitely there. But we, we would have never been filled because it had to close in the lower part of the range because that, that's, what quantifies your, uh, that's what quantifies your risk. So that's the main thing. Yes, regarding the, uh, re regarding the cattle, Mr. Z is talking about that. Uh, I was One of the things that I was looking at in the futures this week, and then, of course, last night um, I was speaking with Sime only, and I posted a chart in here. Uh, on the uh, November soybeans. Let me just get this up here to uh, take a look at it. By the way, that plaque that I posted up there, that's from the, the little rocking horse. It's a its a wooden rocking horse, and it has a covered wagon with it. It's uh, Western style. It is really cool. And boy, my grandsons, man, they really like that thing. Let's take a quick look here uh, at these soybeans because uh, they're down about 20 cents. Uh, wheat's down... Uh, down about 15, I believe. Corn's down about 10. But there'll, there'll be some great buying opportunities. The problem that's happening is the tariff thing that's going on with us is affecting world grain prices everywhere, folks, because people don't know what the heck is going on. Uh, Cy, uh, you know, sold his company out uh, uh, in January, and uh, he now works for them for a few years, and then he's going to be out on his own. But it's the largest hedging operation in the United States and one of the biggest in the world. Cy was pretty big on his own, but now that he's uh, – well, he went – he he sold out the Farm Bureau. There's no, uh, no uh, secret to that. But he'll be running the business there. And uh, believe me, he has a lot of happy farmers because – they hedged their corn based on how much money they could make when it was trading at, uh, you know, about 60 cents higher. So they had a lot of money there. Now, there are, there are farmers, and so I mentioned that to me last night, that didn't hedge their crop. And some of these guys are going to be in big trouble because if they can't get higher prices for this, they're losing money. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys are just barely hanging on because of the prices over the last four years. They're going to lose their farmland, and that will push prices on farmland down. And uh, so that will be another factor that could be happening. Let's move over to the uh, live cattle for Mr. Z because uh, that's one that we've been watching really closely. I, I like August cattle. 
But you'll notice here, uh, we, we talked about that level of 111. And when we went through 111, boys and girls, <laughs> I wanted no part of that. That was a 61% retracement. Uh, I took a little nibble there for 800 80, 80 points, about uh, 350 bucks, and uh, I actually went short, got the money back, just to just to because the trend was so strong to the downside. But right now, if you're looking at August cattle, the last support is at uh, 108.50, and I don't know where it's trading this morning. But if someone would check it for me, with all the stuff that's going on, there might be some margin call selling coming across these grains, and that's going to be uh, really interesting. So. We'll take a, uh, a look at that. Uh, where is uh, Mr. Z? Where is the? Uh, um, hold on here. Where is the August cattle trading at? What was the low today? We closed at one one oh nine fifteen. Probably opened higher because it's so oversold. But the rest of them. Oh, see, look at that. See, 107, it gapped down through there. It's no way. No, no, you didn't want to have anything to do with that. So that's what it looks like. Now, the uh, the corn. The corn is interesting because it has not violated the the bottom yet I haven't I didn't put I didn't put in the overnight uh, uh, corn but I'll show you here that we did get down and we made a 78 percent retracement in the corn it did not make new lows we did not make new lows in the wheat either so uh, the corn and wheat are actually holding above it but uh, the beans have gotten you know totally massacred on that I'm looking for a bottom in them today but what I'm doing is is I'm trying to rely on my artificial intelligence program to see if I can get a low risk entry. So far, none of that has lifted its head, but that's neither here nor there. All right, let's take a quick look here at, by the way, if you want to call in folks, 877-927-6648. That's what we're, that's what we're looking at here. If you have a question, be happy to answer it for you. Oh, we just got up to, there we go. There's what we want to see. We just got up to the old, uh, there's your There's your 60. Oh, this is interesting, boys and girls. Let's take a quick look at this. Oh, well, let's just look and see here. Hold on one second here. Give the old cowboy a second, and uh, we'll take a look here. There we go. This uh, Remember, folks, the uh, 2909 was a 382 retracement. The high we made is 20, oh, well, 208 and a quarter right now. So uh, keep an eye on that. But um, that's a pretty big move. We went from, we removed 15 points in the S&P. That should be nothing considering that we were down 65 handles overnight. So 15 point move in that is absolutely nothing anymore. So that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. So keep an eye on that. That's very, very, uh, very, very important to, uh, to take a look at that. So anyway, that's what we're watching. And uh, we'll see what's going on here. Uh, someone's asked a question about the wheat. I'll bring the wheat up. You'll be able to see the wheat is acting a little bit better than the others. It's still down uh, down about uh, 14 cents, but it's doing a little bit better than the other one. In fact, the wheat is the one, if you have to buy anything, you buy wheat or corn. And I'm not saying you should buy it, but you know, we're over that new moon, and that usually is something that is uh, pretty good to look at. So that's neither here nor there. All right, what other one did we want? we got a break coming up, and then we want to talk a little bit more. Folks, CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger Fresh Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger Fresh Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report comes currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund Funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks. Um, can you post a, a, a times can be seen that that's secret stuff, Peter. I'd have to, I'd have to have you whacked. Didn't that show the times? Should have. Uh, all right, let's let me do the uh, let me do the treasury bonds here, and then I'll see if I can uh, I can do that a little bit later. The time for the top is right now. Uh, the number I was looking at is uh, twenty nine oh nine. Uh, let's take a look here at this uh, British. Um, Treasury bonds, the 30-year bond, I want to get up here. Now, this is a hourly chart that we're looking at here, folks. Uh, excuse me, four-hour chart. If you'll notice, the high we made last night uh, was a 61% retracement of the high that we made back on March the 30th, a perfect 61.8% retracement. And now we're down a little bit. That completes that pattern. We took out the highs of early April, not a good sign. And now we are headed down. That means interest rates should be going higher. Any move now above the 149 level would be viewed as bullish, and then you'd think you'd get up to the 78% level. But that's what it looks like uh, right now as we're watching some of these things unfold. So give me a second here to do one other thing, and then I'll do a little bit of housekeeping here because I have to uh, manage a few positions that I'm looking at. So if you'll give me one second, I'll post that AI. I'm not going to do it every day because I don't, uh, it doesn't work all the time. And, you know, you don't get, you don't want to get involved with those kind, you know, you want to find one or two that works and that's really what you're looking at. What I'm doing right now, folks, in poker is called the stalling technique. I'm trying to get this chart ready so that when I finally do post it, you'll be able to see the times and then everybody will be happy. So here it comes, Peter from Park City. Let's get this up here and you'll be able to take a look at it. You'll see we should be topping right now. And uh, the number I was looking at, 2909, that was a 382 retracement, folks, from the high Friday on the close to the uh, low that we made last night at uh, right around 28.85. That, uh, that number came in at uh, 29.09 and a quarter, I believe, something like that. Anyway, that's what I'm looking at. And, and, and if this would fail, now this is how this works. 
10 minutes from now, in other words, five two-minute bars, if this thing is trading above 212, it's toast. So this is the good part is that you don't have to worry about the doggone thing because it uh, it's going to tell you right away whether you're right or not. So we'll see. Offloading some of the calls you bought last night. You can buy calls at night on the VIX? Are you kidding me, Maria? I didn't even know that. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yep, it's pretty – where is the VIX trading? Would it get up to about 15 or something? Because we, I've been long that VIX for a long time. Yeah, you're reckless. Yeah, you're you're about as reckless as uh, John Paul Getty. He had the original nickel that he ever spent. Um, you folks don't even know who John Paul Getty is. Oh, there was a movie about that. Larry Williams, his daughter, starred in that. Where is the VIX trading? Would someone please tell me? Because I was uh, – I've been rather friendly to that VIX, uh, thinking something like this might happen. And uh, we bought it around 12. Oh, Ruby, Ruby, re very, very important here. Just a second here. Wow, 16.95. That's a big move. Ruby, uh, I don't know if you're here today or not, but we're, we're down to this level that we've been watching in the sugar, the sweet. And uh, I moved over to October sugar. And uh, this should be, we should be trading here right about now, folks. Keep an eye on October sugar because we are making a Gartley pattern there. Uh, this is October, and then we're down about 20 cents in sugar, so that should get the October down to around 12, 12 level. So uh, as long as it stays around that level, it's going to be okay. Now, if we start getting below $12, you know, 11.85 or something like that, you know, then you're going to have to decide that you don't want to risk more than $300. So October sugar should be bottoming here at around 12, uh, right around 12 bucks is what it looks like now. I don't know what it's doing this morning, but uh, that's the pattern that we're watching. It looks very interesting. These tariff things that are going on affects everything, folks, and that's uh, because it hits the news everywhere, and everybody starts to panic at the same time, and it's all a bunch of BS, but that's neither here nor there, and that's how it works. These are outlier events, and uh, not to be sneezed at because they do happen, but they come and go. You know, a week from now, you know, they, they don't even know what he had to say. Remember the Greek, the big thing about the Greek problems that the Greeks were having? Give me a break. They got better, Gre Greeks have a better rating on their bonds than we do, if you can believe that. Whoever rates those bonds is smoking some type of a funny me medicine, but uh, that's neither here. I still don't understand, folks, how our treasuries can be yielding what they are yielding when other countries that are absolutely in the doghouse are selling stuff at uh, negative interest rates. I mean, that has to be the most insane thing that I have heard in all the years that I've been doing this. Now, I'm not a fundamentalist, but I mean, it doesn't make sense to me that you would give someone their money and they're going to charge you for it. Tell me where that guy is. I'd like to do that. You know, <laughs> that just that just is just insane to me. It's uh, it's uh, what they call. Oh, that's, you know what it's called, Maria. It's called modern economic theory. I wrote a piece. I, I read a piece from John Malden over the weekend. It's the only one that I ever read because he has some really guys, smart guys in there like Ben Hunt and David Williams that I I like to read what it's going and we'll see what's happening. Yes, we're going to have a little boy. And he is going to be born on the 13th of June, and it'll be number three. And we'll have a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a zero-year-old. So we don't know his name yet, but we're guessing it's going to be Zachariah because we have an A, an M, and I guess we'll have a Z. All right, let's move on to a couple other things. Folks, you know, when I, when I ask you to take a look at that, uh, that weekly chart on the uh, dollar index, Please do that. You know, I think it'll tell you a lot about what's going on in the world. I'll do the daily for you, but I want you to do the weekly yourself. Like uh, Twentyman says, defy human nature. Do the work yourself. Anyway, uh, this is the uh, U.S. dollar index on the daily. Uh, we're back. We're right at trading around 97.34 or something today. Hasn't really done very much, but uh, that's a key level, folks. That level up there at 98.10, that is uh, that's the big, big, big one. And with this, all this news going on, you notice that the currency's not affected very much at all. They're very, very quiet. The, you know, the, the euro is up a little bit. The, the yen is down, you know, 30 points. It was down a little bit more. Uh, the the uh, Australian dollar's down a little bit, but that's been in a downtrend, and we're looking for lower prices uh, in the Australian dollar anyway. So 
that's another one that looks uh, pretty interesting. So uh, these currencies are, you know, pretty much unaffected. That's where the real money is, folks. That foreign exchange market is real money. That's cash money. When someone buys something or makes something in China or Bangladesh or wherever they're making it, they have to hedge that to be paid in U.S. dollars. And that's what affects these foreign exchange rates. So keep a little, uh, keep an eye on that. The Hang Seng was down uh, th uh, 3% last night. The Chinese market, David White is kind enough to post all these uh, losses, but the Chinese markets were down 6%. And Marshall's asking me about the notes and bonds, and they look lower to me. I, I covered the I covered the bonds, Marshall. Just just covered them just a minute ago. I'll do it again for you because you're very special. And if I didn't do that. Sarah would be on my case like a cheap suit. Here's the uh, here's the four-hour chart of the bonds. Uh, overnight, we hit a 61% retracement of the high, and uh, you know we got a gap in there around 147.10, and uh, looks like that's a pretty major top. So we'll see. 877-927-6648. Ah. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, we ended end the show here with the precious metals. I posted the chart for silver. Uh, gold was actually a little bit higher earlier last night. It was up about three bucks. It's now lower. But I do believe... Excuse me. I do believe we still got a chance to make this 1440 
uh, in the silver, and uh, we're trading at around uh, 1480 something right now. So I still think we've got a chance to uh, to see if it's going to get down to that level. But uh, it's been taking a long time to get there, but if it does get there, it's going to be interesting. Folks, there's also the possibility that the gold made a major top up there at uh, 1395 and uh, let's try it again, 1365. And if we uh, if we get much below $1,200 an ounce, I would have to say that, yes, that's probably what's happened. And, folks, we have a lot of red out there on the commodity markets today, a lot of things happening uh, that are deflationary. And the one thing that the Federal Reserve does not want is deflation. So at any moment they could come in and, uh, you know, drop interest rates or – do some more quantitative easing or something like that. So, and these markets react very quickly. So, even though you're down 65 handles in the S and P overnight, that doesn't mean you can't use your stop. That just tells you that you better use a stop. I mean, if you'd have been long last night uh, or you know Friday and came in this morning, if you had a stop in there, you would have been filled, you know, uh, 50 points lower because it opened 50 lower at 29.10. And then drop to be down 65 lower. So even that, you've got to protect yourself because, you know, the first mistake teaches, the second mistake kills. Your first mistake is you're on the wrong side of the market, and that's it. You'll you'll see. I have a total of four grandkids: three with Sarah, and one with uh, Jill. And Chase is uh, 19, uh, Avery is eight, Mitchell is six, and uh, the little dude is going to be w one day on uh, June 13th. So anyway, let's uh, remember to live every day in an attitude of gratitude and do something nice for someone else today, folks. Thank you very much.